Good Sunday morning, everyone. Welcome back. Got a nice sunrise, 60 degrees. It's early morning. I've got my coffee. Come out to see what kind of project I want to tackle today. And as you saw, we uh, used the bagger to vacuum the lawn. And we are up here in the woods area, so we get small branches, pine cones, you know, um, needles off the tree, all kinds of mess, and it's a lot to raise. But uh, I want to get this lawn fixed, and to do so, you remember I want to use the bucket on the tractor as much as possible. Maybe you can see the views here. Here I must have got stuck a little bit. But uh, let's take a look at that tractor. Walking past, here's a view of the new tires on the riding lawnmower. Of course, they're holding air. They look good on there. Same color rim. Kind of reasonable price. Okay, we got that, you know, bucket installed. And I want to get this uh, using. And we, had, we sprung a leak and we replaced this hydraulic hose. That one we did last year. We replace these two long hoses. They're like six footers, and uh, it lost some fluid. Well, I didn't realize how much we lost. It lost quite a bit of fluid, and it's not even showing on the stick. There's a dipstick right there, and I looked it up in the book, and it takes like eight point six. I gotta look it up to confirm. Eight and eight point something gallons, and. So it could be down a gallon or two, we don't know. But instead of wasting that, we might as well replace the hydraulic filter. And it's been a while, I think we're supposed to do this every 300 hours. And this has power steering. I gotta remember where the filters are. The, uh, obviously the oil filter is up here front. And I think the hydro, somewhere down under here, right there it is. I want to replace that one. That's got a New Holland filter. I think I have another New Holland filter or a Napa filter replacement. And uh, let's get this service. We might as well drain this fluid out. I'll probably fire this up, warm it up a little bit. And uh, maybe I'll go over and hook on our lift and get that out of the way and work right over there so I don't have to work in the dirt here. And I'll get out a pan and collect the oil so I don't make a mess. We got to recycle and um, we'll change the filter and put all fresh fluid in it and we'll be done for another 300 hours. Well, I got my hazelnut coffee here. My Napa know-how cup. And I got out some of my books. This is on the loader. Remember when we were doing the loader, taking it on and off. All I had to do is go find the book. But I didn't. So this would tell me servicing and installation. And then I've got a, uh, a paper to write facts down, specs down. And then I've got this uh, PDF that I downloaded 20 years ago anyway. Um, back when the manual was $450 or something. Um, the problem I had the reason I did this was obviously I like to fix my own my own uh, equipment but I lived at that time I'm a little farther now but I lived at that time about 40 miles from the dealer and I didn't have an equipment trailer at that time that was heavy enough to haul it let's see if we can get to it here there we go. Complete service and repair manual for New Holland TC25D. And so I thought, well, what do you charge to haul it? And they wanted, I think, 250 round trip. Or was it one way? I couldn't remember. They come down and pick it up. And then they wanted, I don't remember the fuel or their uh, labor rate. It was 60 something an hour then. And they said it could take a couple days. I'm thinking, no, 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 no. Let's buy a service manual. So. What we want to do is go to uh, the hydraulic system, which I already marked the page. 
And see, this has troubleshooting. I put it in these binders to keep it clean, keep my grease off it. Um, so there's some adjustments I want to do. There's different things. But let's get back. This is glow plug, electrical. This has pretty much everything. A spool valve, transmission system, power takeoff, differential. There we go. Hydraulic system. Now what we got is 6.1 gallon per minute pump flow. 23 liters. And it's a suction type filter. The hydraulic pump is mounted to the right side of the engine. Driven by the engine oil pump gear mounted on the front of the engine block. The hydraulic pump is a gear type. With the exception of replacing seals, it's not serviceable. Um, suction type filter is located in the inlet line on the right hand side of the rear axle. That's where I, I showed you. The filter is serviced by replacing the complete canister assembly. The filter should be replaced after 300 hours of use. And that's right where... You know I showed you so we're just a spin-on filter um, we're not going to take anything else apart because there's no issues so there's that and I was gonna find out the capacity here thought it was on this page um, somewhere here it told me how many gallons it took I'm kind of trying in a hurry. You know how you do that for filming. That's how many. Why wouldn't they put it together on the pump? But um, I believe it was 8.6. So let me uh, find the correct page and I'll come back on. Okay. Did a little more research there in the book. And on the side of the engine here. There's this filter, and this is the HST, and you think that's um, transmission, but there's two filters. The large one, they say, is transmission, and, well, let me just say, by calling Napa, looking it up myself, that kind of thing, I came with the hole diameter is three-quarter with a thread pitch of 16 thread, and come back over here. To the filters that I have in stock, they're on the shelf. It's a 7098, which crosses over to the new Holland number of 8730043, and it's transmission. This is a large filter, and what it's got is the big one inch, one and one sixteenth inch opening. So this is definitely for the rear, and then the shorter one. Is the front and that number there SBA 34050890 and I saved the bag for it and that was a while back um, and I'm looking this up and that's a three-quarter 16 four inch long and um, Napa has the wicks in stock 7088 42 bucks that's uh, kind of pricey but it's a hydraulic filter I gotta have it Maybe Amazon, I can get a little cheaper and wait a few days. On the tractor, I would like to go with Wix or New Holland parts. And so I'm doing my homework on this. The reservoir was 8.8 .8 gallons, 33.3 liters. Um, the oil they recommend is uh, 134, and in cold weather, the 200. I'm going to use the uh, tractor supply. I'll show you what that is, but that's a, uh, I believe the 134, and that's a cross, so I wrote the information down so I have it. The lifting capacity is 2,865 pounds, the uh, relief valve setting is 2,130, plus or minus 70, and the safety valve is 3,625, plus or minus 290, um, and I'm just going to put down, I replaced the hydraulic filter today date it put in my service record and uh because you only do these every 300 hours or something and it's so easy to forget when you did it and i should write it on the tractor maybe underneath the hood i should start doing that because it's easy to lose your papers but this book was real handy 
tells me what I want to use, you know, and um, tells the models and gallon everything, you know. So we're at 7.1 gallons a minute. And some of the bigger tractors are 6.6. The 33 horse is 6.6. Six. Um, pump speed. All the settings in there. Lift capacity, double spool setting, all that. So what I want to do is get these filters in today. Get the fluid drained. And before I do that, I think I'll run down and get that filter. I didn't want to run back to town, but it's only four miles, so it's not too bad. Run down and... Uh, get that get this project done today because i need to use it we got the chains off which is great now it's not going to lump down the road but uh i got to get this uh fluid up before i drive it too much and um uh, i'll continue on okay one more gander through the garage i got a 7088 that's good save me 42 bucks tax and a trip to town i thought i had the right filters i just don't know why i have so many of these so this one yeah it's a napa 557088 supposed to be a napa gold which is supposed to be the same as a wix looks like a standard oil filter so i should cross reference that but uh i have it that's great so we're going to continue on and get this service going Okay, after running through the servicing here, I came up with a uh, the proper manual. I have the operator's manual, service manual, the hydraulic system in here. It doesn't give explanation on what exactly to do. It tells you how to service and replace parts, but it doesn't tell you how to service it. But in the, in the uh, operator's manual, I found changing the transmission... Rear axle and hydraulic system oil. Change the transmission, rear axle and hydraulic system oil after every 300 hours. Place a suitable container underneath. Drain the rear axle plug and the transmission. So there's one plug here and one plug here. Tell me why it's not in the service manual. And uh, that's it. So you have two locations. So one is it just in front of the center line of the rear axle. And then this one I can obviously see. And you're looking straight up under the oil filters right there. And so, and then the HST is over here. So I'm going to do those two filters. And I'm going to drain these two. And I think the, the backhoe, because it's on here, the bracket's right in the way of that one. So I didn't see it. So I am glad that I looked this up. Because I, I thought it'd be a waste if I uh, didn't get all the fluid out of there. So it's nice and warm out. The tractor's warm. I'm going to drain that oil. So underneath here, this is the one I found right away. And the other one is right there in front of that backhoe bracket. It's, I don't know if you can see it there. Right, I think so. And they're 19 millimeter. And I just loosened both of them. And... The one in the back for the rear axle, that's lower than this one. So I'm going to do the front one first. Let's see how much of a mess I can make here. I got an empty uh, drain pan, but I think it's only going to hold, I don't know how many gallons, probably three. And yeah, the fluid looks nice and clean. Um, all right, it's not bombarding out of there, so that's good. I was a little worried it's going to be a flood. And I couldn't control the speed. This has a nice gasket on it. Set that in my drain pan. We'll let that drain a minute before I do the second one. Whoa, my pan's filling right up here. So I'm going to have to just put the plug in and stop. So I slid the pan back here. This is coming out pretty good. I think we got about five or six gallons out anyway. And then I put a little jug up here to catch the remainder of this one. And it looks like it's all going to fit this time. So I'll set my plugs, keep them separate just in case they're different. I don't think they are, but we'll let this drain out while we start on the filters. All right, I think what we'll do is we'll start with this HST filter. Throw a little pan under here. My only concern is, I like to get the filter out 
prior to taking it off. This is the filter that's supposed to fit it, it says. And this is a small one. The length is the same, but the diameter is different. Now, the book, and looking up online, said it's a three-quarter 16 thread, which that looks like. I guess I got to remove it. And if it's not right, I guess I got to either run down to Napa or um, order it online, you know. Let's see what we got here. Not that tight, but let's see how much it leaks. I put in that oil drain pan, it's still dripping over there. And actually, because of these tubes, this goes up to the oil cooler. This goes back down to the sump. I bet there's quite a bit of liquid in there. So maybe I'll Maybe I better get the pan underneath it prior to doing that. Let me see what we got here. The front one stopped dripping totally. The back one, drip, drip. That's about done. So I'm gonna pause for a second, tighten up them two bottom plugs and use our pan. I asked Dawson to climb under there. Give me a hand. There's one more on the front PTO shaft. It's a little bit lower than the rear transmission and um he just opened that up and we're draining more fluid there as you can see how much you think come out a couple cups yeah not very much but i want to make sure i get all that fluid out usually in these lower what do you call sumps where the fluid is that's where any metal filings or sludge or anything so you got to get that out of there if they're up here in the cylinders whatever you can't get that out but um so now i think we're officially done we'll start on the filters um, that'll drain out probably one more minute or so. I haven't put that plug back in. Dawson tighten that fitting up. That, that plug. And then this. Yeah, I already loosened this up. And then, I don't know, this might be a lot of fluid. Maybe. Mm. Nothing yet. Oh, here it comes. Looks pretty clean. I like the sound of that. Ooh, it's not too bad it's got a little dirt in it now what you want to look at is this center two four six hole three quarter inch looks like the 16 thread and then the distance the size of this gasket so let me dump this out and by talent see your gaskets here never want to leave a second gasket and then feel up here yeah you know, we're on a solid metal and i'm just going to wipe it and that'll get off any debris on the outside and then I might use a little brake clean and a rag to get this cleaned up before we put the new one on. Look at the hood has been rubbing on this. Vibrating on that. All right, clean my hands up. We'll let that drain a second. This is the crossover number. It was a Napa Gold, which is like a Wix 7088, the 557088. And. The uh, problem I have, that is a number that's in the box. The problem I have is the size of it. It's small. So either I replace this with a different size filter. Or this is the updated version because, see it says Wix filtration. So it's a Wix filter in a Napa gold box. So they're probably one of the same. And... Uh, what I got to do is compare the numbers and the gasket size here. So, the, uh, get this oil out. And it, see that, Dawson? See that oil dripping down there? Mm -hmm. See the couple bubbles? Mm -hmm. That's water. There's a little bit of moisture in there. Huh. That's good to get this out of there. And, um, uh, see this? They look the same. This has more holes in it. This is more like an O-ring, right? Yeah. And that's more like a flat gasket. The threads look the same. Now I'm going to go up here and try to even it out. And if the gaskets line up, I'm going to use it because that's what it called for. See how much difference in size. They line right up. And I think before I put it on, I'll measure, get a tape measure, measure that diameter. 
if it's wrong I'll go get another filter but it's what it called for Ought to be like South Main Auto Ta -da! with a brake cleaner. This is a Detroit Axle. I got some uh, of those slotted rotors and they come in a kit. We clean that off with some brake clean. Look up there, make sure there's nothing. And it is super clean now. Looks pretty nice. And so I put this filter right up to the other one. I measured the gasket. Dawson and I did it together. Two and a half inches outside to outside. So looks like it's going to fit and the ceiling surface up here is really wide it's uh about three quarters of an inch wide so it looks like o-ring or gasket should work if the threads are correct now let's see here it sounds good to me we'll get this put on there and the reason i'm so worried about it is all this other filter says on it is uh oil filter change interval 50 the first one at 50, the 300, so I know that's a uh, factory filter, but this has been changed because they came out to my house and did it under warranty, you know, the first time. It also says it's 6V17, which does not line up with any numbers anywhere, so um, I looked it up, and then when I called Napa, they asked me what's the number I want to cross-reference, and I said, no, you better look it up, because I didn't want to fault them, you know, and they... Gave me the same numbers in my hand that I had, so I'm quite pleased with that. Get it nice and snug. I can see the part number. That's awesome. I'll get the marker. We'll mark the hours and the date. And today is the 15th. So I'm going to go four. 15, 23, and the hours are 2586, 2586, so it'll be due again about 3,000 hours, I better do hours on there, HRS, and then I might do just H. S T on there so there's no confusion which when they say hydraulic filter this is hydrostatic all right so uh this is a three range hydro um let's go around and do the uh, transmission hydraulic filter it's a big one there's the location of our other filter i can see some writing on it but it's worn off i can't see the hours i can see the date i'll move you over here so i can fit in there and I'll grab that filter, which is say crossover from the New Holland number, which is a Napa 7098. And so that one looks correct. I shouldn't have any issues with this one. And I did the same thing when I called down. I asked them to, to look it up, and I looked it up myself. And I don't give them the numbers. I hate to call an auto parts store and say, give me a, you know, a Fram so-and-so. And, okay, here it is. Well, now I'll say, you know, they gave me what I asked for. I want them to look it up and confirm that we're both on the same page, you know. Oh, this is slippery. This is a New Holland filter, and there's a dent in it. It must have hit something. I, uh... I think I told you I had a little issue a couple years ago. I, I was talking about Mother's Day and my mom's birthday. And my brother and I combined our services. And I tried to get Dawson involved and my brother's wife. And we go over there and we volunteer to help her clean the screens on the house, wash the windows, uh, just things in the flower bed, some kind of mechanical repair. Well, I took this over with a backhoe and we tore down the old pool that needed a, f a lot of work. Oh, I dropped a filter. It's on the ground. It's spillage. Let me grab it quick. I knew it was so slippery and hard to hold. All right, we got a little kitty litter. We're gonna have to use it. This driveway needs sealing this year so the oil won't hurt too much. All right, so. Here's our filter, 
this is the big hole, the one and one sixteenth. And uh, this is a flat gasket. So let's compare our new one quick. Pretty sure it's the same thing. Yep, same exact thing. And I, don't, I see the, yeah, a lot of the stuff is wore off. I don't know how many hours was on it. That's a bummer. So let's dump that upside down. Here's a new Holland number, 87300043. And that crossed over to the Wix 7098. And I think on here it'll have an extra couple numbers. So it's a 557098. So let me reach up here and check this ceiling surface. Yeah, there's a little bit of junk on the outside edge. Yeah, so let me get the uh, brake clean over here. We'll spray that off. And then when you touch it like that, you know there's no second gasket up there, you know. Clean that all off. Great clean guys pretty quick. Can's empty. I always wonder why brake clean cans empty so fast. It's like and then you get something like uh WD forty and it goes and it's done, you know, you don't get any more pressure. You gotta repressurize the can. So let me move you over here a little bit. Hard to get the tripod any lower, but there's our our thread. I know the filter's the same. I'll put a little bit of this oil on the gasket. And I guess I got to reach up under there afterwards because I don't know what angle this will stop at. I'd like to stop it so you can read the part number, but a lot of times it's on the back. And so I'll probably have to climb up in there. Or do I dare write it first? Maybe I'll write it first and we'll get lucky. Be nice to get lucky. All right, I wrote it on both sides. That way I'm pretty sure I can see it. Our date and our hours. Got our oil on our gasket. There's a bunch of oil dripped on the frame up under here. Let's see if I can do this without getting it dirty. Don't you think they could always put them in a better spot? So you can reach them, keep them clean. Some people say you should fill the vertical filters first. I say I'm messy when I do that. So let's get this snug as a bug here. Oh, see, I can see the hours that way. I can see the part number. I think I'll come around. Almost a quarter turn more if I get the grip on it. It's just in a bad spot. I can't really turn my arm here. She's probably not going to come off for a few more years. So there's our part number. There's our hours. Pretty happy with that, I think. Let's see what we got here. That tells the date, the hours, part number. I still could turn it more, but I don't want it that tight. So there we are. She's in there. You can see the part number on her. So let's get our drain pan, get this cleaned up. Get a little kitty litter for the drive. But then we'll get our fluid out here and start filling. All right. I don't know who put this backhoe on first, but we, now we got to work down in this area. Um, here's our our dipstick. I'll take that out. There's our high. There's our low. It's in good shape. I'll leave this up here somewhere. Here's our fill. I loosen this up. Now I dropped it. It's got an O-ring on it. O-ring's a little bit rough. So I'll probably order that. 
I'll spray this off with brake clean, but see that? It'll dry cracked. We'll reuse it for now, but I'll clean this off with a brake clean. And then I got a funnel that will sort of fit here. I think it will. I got my uh, ROPS down here, the roll bar. Yeah, she's in. But you see this? I, I put this down because I can't get in the building because it's up higher than seven feet. You put the seat down, you can't get it up. You put the seat up, you got to slam it by that. So, see that? So, I'll just hold this out with a spacer so I can pour it in because it's pretty much right in the way. I could put a funnel in a funnel, I guess. Do something to keep it out here. And let me get my fluid out. I bought 10 gallons of this and VP Racing Lubricants Ultra J20A Plus Utility Tractor Fluid. It uh, is specially formulated to protect older tractors and hydraulics. Advanced detergents, reduced deposits, robust anti-wear. Um, formulated with highly refined base oils to resist the breakdown. Um, it outperforms. I don't know. I thought it was probably just a little bit better than um, what they had, um, you know, as a standard. And, of course, it's not AMS oil or anything. So this is middle of the road. I'm only going to do this, you know, every five years or something. So let's uh, put in something that can help the tractor. I got 10 gallons of this. But to lift um, this up, it's, you know, a little over 8 pounds to the gallon. You're trying to hold up a little over 40 pounds up in between there and the roll bar. That's going to be difficult. So I'm going to put some right in this uh, clear gallon jug and then I can just pour it in. So I prop this roll bar out with a pool filter. That works. It's an old pool filter and uh, I got my one gallon jug. I don't know if I can do this without a slopping mess. Let's try it. It's in a weird spot. Yeah, I just, maybe I ought to put a funnel in a funnel here because liquid gold, you know. Actually, I, I think it was on sale or something. It was about $55. I think it's about $11 a gallon, so not too bad. But definitely this roll bar is in the way. If I had the backhoe off, I'd just put my pins in, put the roll bar up. I jumped the gun. I wanted to play on the backhoe. And um, didn't know I was going to break some hydraulic hoses, you know. They didn't actually burst, but they were spraying. And I said, I'm done. Shut her down. And the base of this funnel is only a half inch, so it's going to take a while. So I'll just count these, and I believe, would we say this held? Eight point some gallons. So I'll put in probably seven and start checking it. I'll turn you back on when I get up that high. So gallon one down. All right, I put uh, seven gallons in it. I think that book's at 8.8 .8 or something. And let's check the stick here. We got the cross hatch, which is quarter inch is on and it's three quarters to the top. Put our dipstick in there. Here we are on the dipstick. We're above full by an eighth of an inch so that's kind of good news I didn't pour another gallon yet so let's take the funnel out we'll just set it I don't know set it here somewhere in a rag I guess and then put our top on I'm getting debris in there and what I want to do now is fire it up fire it up fire it up Terrell and uh We'll run the hydraulics a little bit, and what that'll do is it'll fill both filters, and then I'll raise the bucket up, fill the cylinders. You know, they're 
they're full, but I'm saying run everything. Make sure it goes out into the oil cooler. And I'll even run the backhoe a little bit here. So I'll back you up a little bit so we don't run you over. And what that'll do is that'll get the air out of the system. And then the level should come down about right. All right, let's fire it up. We'll run it through its paces. Make sure we got no leaks on any filters. in all three ranges, that's great. I don't see any leak in here. I looked at the other filter and it's dry, this one's dry. We'll run this through some paces here. Gotta get the unlock. That'll circulate all the hydraulic fluid, you know. back to the reservoir and that'll tell us whether we got the proper level you know a little jerky without the riggers down any difference but I sure feel good you know putting fresh filters and oil in it you know especially when you have a catastrophic leak like that hose is blowing so now I want to check that level where I rolled it ahead it's a little more on the level you go up that way it's a little bit of a slope so this will be more accurate I'll put the stick in Pull it straight up. Now see what we got here. It's pretty clean. See where it is. It's right there. Flip it over. It's about an eighth inch low now. See how clean that is. So I'm going to add a little touch more. And then... We shall be done with this project. Let me move you forward. I got the funnel sitting in there. 
and I got me about just under half a half a gallon here. I don't want to overfill it, so I'll put in about half of this. Put in a good quart. I kind of wish the service manual say, you know, an eighth inch equals so many ounces or something on everything, like cars, whatever, so you know. We'll let that drain down in there. We'll check our level again. This type of funnel with the ribs, they take a little longer to drain down anyway. But what I want to do is I want to do a little spring cleaning on this because it's filthy. I want to give it a good scrubbing. Wash these plexiglass. Kind of like to take them off. Here's some of them. That's some of the vibration is need to re them here. When you put the chains on, run down the driveway, you get a little vibration. It loosens up light components like that. It's a cobbed up cab, but it works, you know. Keeps the snow off my neck. So let's push our stick down in. See how close I am at one quart. And it's low about a sixteenth. So I'm going to finish dumping this in, and it's probably going to do it. So it's roughly a half a gallon is an eighth of an inch. And it took seven and one half gallons that's why i bought 10 gallon of it i probably could have got away with buying them two and a half gallons so you get ripped off buying them that way now we got a little bit of extra in case i blow another hose i told you i had one more hose up there i'd like to replace if it starts seeping it's going to be replaced you don't want to I had one blow once, and um, when the tractor is probably, I don't know, 1800 RPM anyway, and it shot, I bet, 40 feet. It was just a stream of fluid. Shut her right down. It's, you know, it'll empty the tank in a hurry. She's still dripping a little bit. But I think I'm going to pressure wash this, get it cleaned up. I probably ought to get out a little bit of paint. I got some New Holland Gray for the bucket and the frame. And then the uh, New Holland Blue for some of the body components. The back hole and the uh, bucket up there. I got to get this little O-ring. I'll order that. And then what else do I want to do with this? I just want to get it all cleaned up and then June 9th is when Dawson School has, we're on the full mark, Dawson School has that tractor day. So check out Whistling Diesel's channel when he was talking about the Norwich School where they said it's illegal to drive tractors on the roads, which I don't know how you'd ever get your planter or your spreader or your hay wagons or anything around the farm if you didn't go down the road a little bit we got a little seal leaking on here we know about so i'm gonna check out farmcraft he did a so a lot of cylinders recently and i want to see if i can tackle one of these myself and get a kit for it rather than pay somebody so we're good here Everything's good there. I think what I'm going to do is so uh, I'll play around today and get started on that yard work we we're talking about. And what we want to do is fill in the divots around the yard. The robins are eating the worms. And uh, the grass has come on since I mowed it. It's probably almost an inch higher in a couple days. We got five minutes of rain last night. And I got a couple new flowers popped out here along the side of the house so I'm getting excited I said I want to fix part of the lawn right here and all the way around so I'm going to go over to our piles we got we got sand topsoil mulch 
we got leaf clippings and then there's a little more mixed sand in there so i'm gonna pick out some of the materials i got i've got some grass seed and um see if i can do that and if i can get some sod i'd love to do that because i could fill in all the divots set sod tamp it in and water it but thanks for watching we'll see you on the next video guys